Hi, Shreyan, sir. Hi, Shalini. Friends, there are three stages of emotions. So three stages of emotions is, uh, first stage of emotion is emotional slavery. So here we think emotional slavery is, we think we are responsible for other people's feeling. Like uh, yesterday, somebody was saying uh, in the last uh, end of the session, we're in the sharing session, he, we are tired of pleasing others and still we can please somebody and we cannot please somebody else. So, so right. So, so you know, if, if you're trying to please somebody, it is again a form of emotional slave, uh, slavery. You know, so, so we think we are responsible for others' feelings, feelings. So we have to somehow make the other person happy, right? But the truth is, is, is uh, your, your, your happiness depends on you. Their happiness depends on themselves. Nobody can make each other happy. At the same time, nobody can make you unhappy without your consent. So it's we, if we feel, if we blame others for our unhappiness, then we, we are giving that consent to others. We are, we are giving that power to others to make us unhappy. So, so it's our choice and, and whether we feel responsible for others' happiness or make others responsible for our, uh, uh, for our happiness, that is a form of emotional slavery. So that is first stage. The second stage is re rebellious stage. So this here, you know, we try to, we go into the state of, uh, we are in an angry state here, you know, where we feel key, oh, it's not my problem. Anything, any, anything comes back to us, it is say, we, we are like, you know, oh, it's not my problem, it's your problem. Sometimes we see the children, our children rebelling us and they say, you know, you, 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 you deal with your own shit or it's your problem, we, we don't care. Or, or we, we, the same attitude we play with, some, suppose we are hurt or we are angry, then we'll play the same drama with our friends or family or, uh, or in, in, a work, in a work environment. You know, this is not my problem or this is your responsibility. This is not my responsibility or I'm not responsible for your feelings. Totally a sense of abandonment, you know, where, but the truth is uh, abandonment is also pessimism, pessimism in action, you know. So, or, or we, we become very indifferent, you know, where uh, so indifference is uh, the opposite of love actually is not hate, but indifference. So we become very indifferent. So all of a sudden we become very indifferent to our spouse or to, or to uh, our parents. And uh, we feel that, uh, and, and that is hurting somebody, right? That is making somebody feel very anxious or upset or hurt, hurting just because we are indifferent. Because there's expectation in a, in a family environment or in a relationship, everybody, everybody uh, because of, uh, we, we expect uh, others or, 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 or our loved ones to respond or behave in a certain way. But when, when, once, once you become indifferent, uh, your very indifference hurts somebody. Um, or if somebody else is indifferent, then, then it hurts us. So this is uh, the second stage of, th sec uh, this is uh, of the three stages, this is the second stage of uh, emotions, which is rebellious stage. Now the third stage is emotional libera liberation. So here, so this is a very evolved state where you, where, where you are responding to others need out of compassion, not out of any guilt or shame or fear. At the same time, you are never suppressing your own needs. Right. So, uh, uh, because sometimes, our, our, if you are suppressing your own needs, uh, our suppression can actually lead to depression. Most of the reason why we, uh, uh, people go through depression is because of emotional suppression. So here we are. We are while we understand others' needs, we are also never uh, suppressing our own needs uh, in, in in responding to the need of others. While we value others' needs, but we are also uh, um, expressing our own needs. And that's why, and that is when the relationship becomes is more fulfilling. It is more everlasting, which is more, more long lasting. Otherwise, you know how it is happens, you know, we, 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 we meet somebody, we meet a girl for the first time and we, we feel we have fallen in love because we are, I'm going to act the way you want me to act. And, and the girl is acting the way she, I, I want her to act. So, but, but once after, once after a period of time, we, we, how long can you keep that facade, right? So once you, um, and then the problem, and then you, you're in love and then you marry, but then, then eventually you go back to your true self. 
then then you are being what you are she is being what she is and then the relationship starts falling apart so so friends that's why to have a re really uh, lasting relationship it is important to have this the, to embrace the state of emotional liberation where is where responding to others need out of compassion and not out of guilt shame or fear we are never suppressing our own needs in response to the need of others always giving expression to their need, our needs and and valuing the expression of others needs and always focusing on the needs not on the just the expression or not just um on the facade of the of that need going go seeing behind it if my child is upset or angry what, what, what is his need what is his unmet need why, why what is he trying to say right so so and that that is when the relationship become more fulfilling so express our need with that with the santa claus energy you know so how santa claus energy is always fun joyful happy uh, light hearted so so even though it is your need you can express it need not be with a lot of seriousness or heaviness it could be you can just express your need in a playful way light hearted way you know um so I, 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 and stating clearly what we need in 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 a way that communicates that we are equally concerned with the needs of others as well as our own so it's important to state very clearly and and state it in a way that we so that the others also feel that while we express our needs we also are equally concerned with their their needs and we value their needs also and that is when the relationship becomes more meaningful and it becomes more uh, long lasting and more sustainable so you know it is uh, it is uh, said that uh, 10% uh, marshall rosenberg he uh, he was a uh, 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 father of non violent communication he 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 represented a lot of nations to resolve the conflict between the nations if two nations are at war so they will um, he will he will mediate between the two countries to try to resolve their conflicts and he said that 10% of the conflict is actually only 10% of the conflict is due to difference in opinion 90% of the conflict is due to wrong tone of voice and this is not just on a personal relationship it is even in even in the state in, in in the macro level in the in the in in a in the in a relationship of different nations the president of the nation made some comment and uh, that provoked the president of the other, other nation and now they are at war or uh, it could be a uh, it could be a, it, it could be not be a physical war it could be maybe a financial war or um, uh, Uh, like uh, like like in today's day and age we are seeing that you know we are have a cold war where we are having financial war between maybe say us and china so 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 similar to that it says that only 10% of the conflict is due to difference in opinion 90% is due to wrong tone of voice so that says a lot how our communication is so important the way we communicate makes such a big difference right and uh, in view of this i also want to talk about few other things like uh, resentment you know with a uh, uh, lot of times we carry a resentment with other people in a relationship so it it all starts with um, sometimes it just start with something happened my oh my girlfriend left me oh i am not in a good mood and now that good mood uh, turn into uh, maybe a state of being uh, now it become my temperament and i if i extend it for maybe uh, one month now it's, uh, or two months now it became my temperament now if i extend it for another further longer period of time other again it i again now it becomes again now it becomes my uh, my state of being it becomes a personality trait so uh, uh, with anybody i uh, with any situation any event i am very resentful because because i trusted her and still she left me now i cannot trust anybody so this this becomes a personality trait sometimes we live the we still still live the memories of the past and over a period of time a personality becomes a personal reality right and then we draw more of those situations into our life because now we are we now we are the grievance we become the grievance looking for a cause now it is not about that people or place or situation or time and event now that grievance or the resentment is in me now i am looking for a cause to match that emotion after 10 good things happening in my life i'll speak up one one small thing or one thing 
which is not happening as per my as per my as per my expectation and now i am angry because of that i i'm i'm, I'm resentful with that person or because of that um or even in a in a relationship i i the person is doing 10 good things i'm not looking at that 10 good things but one wrong thing if he did i i am very resentful against this, that person even though his intention might be right so so we so over a period of time it is not about that person it is about us it is about the emotion we carry in us so that's how we we become a grievance looking for a cause and our choice is we can be a joy looking for a cause so and what happens is a lot of times when when somebody is behaving in a certain way we we identify our ego we make uh, we make even though they may be wrong even though they may be wrong and so that means if they are wrong they are unconscious right but we identify so much with their unconscious state that their unconscious state we make i make it our own identity we make it our own as if uh, we we buy that we buy buy that unconscious state and now that that is why it is impacting us that is now it is hurting us that is now it is uh, uh, we are feeling resentful or uh, uh, we feeling hurt or uh, anger or uh, uh, or resisting that uh, person or uh, feeling a state of uh, rebellious against that person so so friends this is this is we have to understand that you know everybody comes from a different state of emotions or different state of evolution so even if we feel the other person is wrong we don't need to make their, their unconscious state our own identity right so so non reaction is actually a way to dissolve ego and not just our personal ego but if you so in that moment in that state just be non reactive that's what buddha says non reaction is a way to dissolve ego and collective human ego it will if your if, it will not only dissolve your own ego even the people around you even your society your country your nation your uh, religion whoever if everybody if everybody applies that principle of not reacting to 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 the adverse situations then uh, uh, then you, then you can dissolve the collective human ego right so buddha said pain is inevitable but suffering is optional so it is we all go through pains we all go through challenging moments we all go through contrasting situations but whether to suffer from that situation or not it's, it's our choice right nobody nobody dies from a snake bite everybody you, you die from the poison which which after the snake bite then which the venom or the poison which spreads into your blood so so whatever the situation has happened has happened but how much emotionally you embrace that situation what what uh, how you judge that situation as good or bad right or wrong so whichever according to you judge that situation or that event you 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 assign that me whatever meaning you assign to the situation you actually draw, draw that experience into your life you buy that experience into your life because with your attention your energy wherever your attention goes your energy flows and your energy is the currency of the universe right so with your energy you buy that experience so 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 that's why when i said there are no justified resentments there are there are there, there are no justified resentment so we need to it is more important uh, it could be any 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 situation it could be the most tragic situation but but eventually it is it is only an opportunity for us to heal something within us so so nothing nothing is nothing is is uh, bigger enough to justify that oh that my resentment is justified right so your resistance and what happens then what you resist you persist right so your when you resist it it actually hardens the shell of the ego because your your resentment is coming from your ego your uh, the more you resist the more you harden the ego the more you strengthen your ego but once you accept it it softens the ego so embrace it embrace a lot, a lot of times when you if you are angry or upset or anger is it the best thing is to embrace silence non reaction just be silent say say that okay fine whatever it is at this moment i'll be silent i'll take a call or i'll answer you back after 2 hours right now i let me take time to center myself silence is a speech of a spiritual seeker right so that your silence itself speaks a lot it is the silence between the notes that make the music so friends it is our choice in a relationship it is very important sometimes to embrace silence you came as a creator not as a reactor 
we don't need to be we, not, we don't need to react to every situation every event every uh, every uh, every everything which happens in, a, in in the course of a relationship right this uh, and that's what that's what you know how to, that's what responsibility means responsibility means your ability to respond your ability to, to respond responsibly so that is called responsibility so you take responsible for your behavior you take responsibility for your emotions right so uh, and every time you recognize this ego every, every time you recognize this trait in you every time you recognize your impulse to behave or react the moment you recognize the moment you uh, uh, see yourself buddha said seeing is freeing the, the the moment you recognize this emotion in you this trait in you where you have impulse to now behave adversely or feeling of grievance or resentment you moment you recognize it is this weekend the very act of recognition will weaken that emotion right so and 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 resentment carried for a long time become the grievance right and and it and, and just and it does not happen in a relationship it does not just happen in a, in a one on one level it could be when a collective grievance uh, maybe say suppose my country is in war with uh, as a history of a fight with some another country so but because i am born in that country and because i am born to that story the moment i hear about that country i feel i feel resentful i feel i carry the grievance right so so it so it can it it can uh, it can carry for centuries in the psyche of a nation or a tribe or a community or 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 a religion and could lead to the cycle of endless violence you know A lot of times we are fundamentalists in our nature, you know. Oh, my religion is the best religion. Only my God is the only God. Your the other religions or other gods are fake, or you know. So, so it could be. It could be. So it is all. It is all. Uh, all these belief systems actually dip, uh, drives the relationships, right? So, uh, but the truth is, we are all one. We are all equals, and uh, so, uh, so. Uh, we have to understand this uh, whether are we carrying any collective grievance or collective resentment collective conditioning of mind and is that in also impacting my relationship so and it needs a lot of honesty to see because collective grievance is is very dangerous it's very subtle because everybody is feeling so if i am living in india you now everybody feel that this country is this ex country is my enemy or this neighbor is my enemy so everybody feels so so i feel it's very normal to feel so it is in fact more patriotic to feel so but the truth is in the in the from the eyes of the source it is it is uh, it is our limitation it is our limited perception because all religions all nations are man made all boundaries are man made we may be in this lifetime we may be born in this country but if we resent that country so much and if we hate if we carry that anger maybe in next lifetime to learn that lesson we will be born in that country so 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 where do you belong so so you have to understand from that source from the eyes of that source and 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 as long as you keep blaming others you know most of the time we keep blaming others for our problems you know so blame always blame always keeps the wound open you know the more you blame others oh and, and sometimes we blame our past sometimes we live the memory 20 years back that happens 20 years back and and that wound reliving that wound again again keeps that wound open and that wound is never healed maybe uh, maybe three months time we forget it and it starts healing and again something triggers that memory and again we say oh this person did this to me and that's why i am this because of that person so again you open that wound so blame always keeps the wound open only forgiveness heals right so so it is important for us to friends understand this thing that uh, you don't have to blame anybody for your problem take responsibility uh, i'll tell you one story there was one uh, uh uh a guy went to a party he got uh, he had good time he had a lot of fun in the party in the night and uh, while he was but by the end of the party he was completely drunk and then he was crossing the road while he was crossing the road he met with a slight he with accident he fell down and his face he hurt his head and his face started bleeding now of course he was drunk now he somehow he reached his home and when he saw his face in the mirror he saw that uh, oh my god 
this he saw when he saw himself in the mirror he thought that the mirror is bleeding because there was a blood all over the mirror um because that was the reflection of him so he started he thought that the mirror is bleeding and he started putting bandaid on the mirror right he started putting bandaid on the mirror and he thought oh he's done his job now and then he went to sleep of course next day morning when he got up he, he realized that how stupid he was uh he was himself was hurt and he put bandaid on the mirror so friends this is how we also live a life we feel that a problem or a solution is outside if we fix this relationship if we fix that person then everything will be fine then my relationship will be fine but the truth is we don't need to fix that person we need to fix ourselves right when things change inside you things change around you right so 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 we need to break that chain of pain we, the chain of pain that pain is within us we 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 have to work on ourselves right also friends in in relationship most of the times we we defend ourselves in being right we want to make others wrong right so just to give to prove our perspective or opinion or judgment or our story we want that we want to prove that oh i am right and others are wrong because it gives the sense of superiority but sometimes in a relationship it is also important to have a, to know others perspective and in both perspectives can be right in their own way so you don't need to really defend or fight for your perspective you can express your own view and leave it at that right and 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 it does not mean ki yours is wrong and his is right or his is wrong and you are right we, we can have two different perspective to the same thing or we can have 100 different perspective to the same thing so you don't need to defend your right sometimes it is good to admit that you are wrong a lot of times it's it's a it's a strong very rarely in a relationship you will admit ki okay sorry i was wrong so so being wrong could also be right right and always um focus your attention wherever your attention goes your energy flows so focus your attention on what that person is doing right rather than always catch them doing right rather than doing wrong it is a habit if anybody does right including a children if they do one small wrong thing and then we'll catch them and they they should be we'll end up guilt in them shame in them we'll we'll give them punishment uh, yeah. they there should be consequences you know and and all those blah 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 you know so but friends the truth is uh, uh whatever you appreciate actually appreciates what you appreciate appreciates so why not focus your attention on what you love about that person if you if you if you if we if you give more appreciation to that person he will feel more motivated more charged you will actually raise his vibration and then 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 he'll he'll, he'll give more of that uh that emotional output is more of that emotional output will be in, in that direction right so so that's what einstein said you can never solve the problem from the level of mind which created it hatred cannot heal hatred anger cannot heal anger so uh so friends we have to understand how the law of energy how the energy dynamics works in a relationship people people will forget what you did for them but people will never forget how you made them feel lot of times in a relationship uh we feel that uh, including us uh, are maybe our children uh, children grow up and now they don't care for us and we feel that oh i love my children so much how much i did for them for my child and and now now he got married and now uh, he uh, is successful in his own life now he don't care for us or it could be our brother or uh, so so you know the truth is we have, we have been we've been so focused on doing 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 in the act of doing we forgot that we 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 the, the state of being even though we been we have done a lot but we never made that other uh, our other person feel good about that about himself right because we thought ki if if we keep correcting we keep correcting some day he'll be better some day he'll be better but but that keep correcting attitude has gone for such a long time months and days and months and years and years that that we never made that other person feel good about that person so it is not intentional but but that has become a state of being or that has become an attitude our our uh, um, our way to respond or way to uh, this is that has become a basis of our relationship or uh, so so friends it is very important to be a st- to we to focus on the state of being are you happy together are we enjoying some good moments together are we having some fun time together 
with your children or with your friends or with your family because they will always remember that feeling you may do 10 things less but but one that good moment that one that joyful event that because it is the feelings which turn into long term memories it's not what you're doing 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 it is any any feeling with intense emotion any feeling with intense emotion turns into a long term memory like how when your first child was born you were so ecstatic so now you always remember that moment right um uh, maybe your day of marriage or uh, the first day you propose to your uh, wife or spouse so you always remember those ecstatic moments because you felt it such intense emotion and that turns into a long term memory so feelings with intense emotions turns into a long term memory so 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 when in a relationship just see how can i make others feel good about themselves how can i make others feel about our relationship about our time together so that is that is uh, very important so uh, <clears throat> so friends this is uh, uh, uh and, and then only then only then you develop the genuine relationship right so uh, and and give alert attention with no wanting whatsoever in a relationship it is very important to give attention to a relationship so many times we take a relationship for granted right we just we we feel that or especially the closest relationship we always take for granted i know this person is always there and we start giving stop giving i mean attention to that relationship and especially more so in in the in the, now that we are so much into our mobile phones our smartphones and with the social media you, we've been we 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 are never there in the present moment right so we've been hooked hacked and hijacked by social media by our smartphones so even though we are physically here but i am physically but but but, uh, but mentally i'm somewhere else to to the means of my phone so so friends what is and that's why that is again the reason why we are losing a relationship so give alert attention to a relationship without without any need to want something from that just just be in the present moment just be there sometimes we just listen we just listen to reply ki the moment how how fast the moment she she stops and i i'm ready to reply but hardly do we listen to just for the sake of listening just listen till the end just not not necessarily that we have to reply or not necessarily that i have to counter it back you know so lot of time so it's important in relations to be genuine relationship it is very important to be interested rather than interesting we are always in a group between our friends we are always shy to trying to show how interesting i am rather than being interested in that person so be interested rather than interesting right and also friends in a relationship it is very also important in a close relationship to to give each other the freedom to give the freedom to each other so uh, where where an acceptance and allowance i accept the person to be the way where that person is allow the person to be the way the person is we always try to change that person i will love you when you become like this i will only love you when you are like this but but and then and so and so we so we we draw so we 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 put so many conditions to our relationship it we make it so conditional so it is important to accept and allow the person to be the way they are not just accept but even allow that person to be the way they are so so it's like uh, can like i leave you to be free to be yourself i leave you free to be yourself to think your own thoughts to indulge your own taste to follow your own inclination and behave in you and behave in ways you decide to your liking so this is where uh give so that you give that freedom you accept them the way they are and that is where they feel embraced they feel accepted and that that is the basis of and then you develop true relationship right and friends uh, while we are talking about relationship uh, i also want to talk about a relationship with time uh a relationship with time um you know a lot of times uh, we have developed a relationship uh, uh with time that uh, when most of the time you know we how do we experience time we experience time always in the form of present moment right life is nothing but slices of present moment tomorrow actually never comes because uh, because when tomorrow comes we can only experience tomorrow in a form of present moment right 
but the truth is, and what happens is, in, in, in relationship with time, we always postpone our happiness for tomorrow, or we always postpone that, uh, uh, okay, when that happens, then I'll be happy. If I'm in a house, I'm, I, if I'm in my uh, uh, home, I, I, I feel, ki, oh my God, the kids are making so much noise. If I go to my office, then I'll be happy. If I go to office, I'm missing my children. Then I want to go home. If I'm home, um, uh, if I, I'm with my, uh, then I want to go on a holiday. If I go on a holiday, the moment I'm on the holiday, oh, I'm missing my work. I'm on the phone call for my work. So we are never in the present moment, right? We are never embracing that present moment. And we are always postponing our happiness for tomorrow. And that has become a relationship with time, right? But friends, it is important that you can only experience time, you can only experience tomorrow, only in form of present moment. So your present is actually a presence to you. Your present, embrace that present moment fully. Honor that present happening. Practice acceptance and allowance. What is the present moment? Accept it fully, embrace it fully, allow it fully. Honor the present happening. And once you honor it, it, it loses its seriousness. However challenging it may be, it loses its seriousness, it loses its heaviness, right? So, because as long as you resist it, now you're looking for, oh, tomorrow might make it, so tomorrow, tomorrow could be better, tomorrow could be better, and you keep postponing. But the truth is, tomorrow never comes, right? So friends, uh, in view of relationship, uh, also want to explain that, you know, you have to understand that whatever roles we are playing, you know, we play, it's all temporary roles. So like, if I'm a customer, I, I'm more demanding. If I'm an airline passenger, I'm more demanding. But if I'm meeting some senior politician, all of a sudden I am very submissive, very humble, very courteous. If I, it all, our, our, whole, our whole communication, our whole way of relate, how we relate to others depends on who's on the other side. Whether that person has power over me or whether I have power over others. So friends, please don't identify yourself. We know that these roles are temporary. And in a, in a day, we play 20 different roles. In, in a house, in the in office, I'm the boss. But the moment I come to my house and I see my wife, I'm nobody. You know, so 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 you have to understand that we we only play the roles, right? So so don't so don't don't identify with the roles so much. And 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 that is why, because we are only living in, in a relationship, we are only relating to others as per our temporary roles. We, we are losing a genuine relationship. We are losing the authentic relationship. How uh, we, are, we are losing, um, uh, because we don't see each other as equals. Sometimes either we are superior or sometimes we are inferior. Right? And that, uh, but, but the more identified you are with your respective roles, the more inauthentic, inauthentic the relationship becomes. So, so friends, just understand that all these roles, I'd be aware that what are the roles which you're playing we are only temporary, right? So don't take your role so seriously. As I told before, you have a center class energy, lightheartedness, right? Uh, also in terms of, again, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about our relationship with our children, you know, our conscious parenting uh, is, uh, is, is how we relate with the children. You know, it is every child desire to be treated equally. But we feel because we have power over others, we induct guilt, shame in them. We will catch them doing wrong most of the time. So friends, it is important to, to know, uh, uh, know at the deep down that we are all equals. Or maybe our children are, maybe they are more evolved. Maybe, maybe we need to learn from our children. And actually our children, how the children behave is actually a reflection of our own self. They're only mirroring what, mirroring us. What doesn't matter what we have said or that, what they're mirroring your energy. They're mirroring your actions, your, your, your vibrations. So, so friends, uh, uh, it is very important to be being rather than doing, doing, doing. Right? We are human. That's why we are called human being. Human is about doing, but being is formless. Being is about being, your vibrational state, your energy, your uh, vibrational output, which, which you are, which you are uh, your energy field, your, uh, your, 
your uh, uh, what whatever energy are resonating to the to the quantum world to the quantum field to the to the people around you so 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 that is where that is why we are called human being right friend and especially in terms of a child uh, the it is the longing of every child to be recognized on the level of form not on, not just on the level of form but on the level of being the the child resonates more to the feelings right rather than uh, just being so so the child wants to be recognized uh, uh, to recognize what that child is feeling it is important to understand that what the child is going through right rather than with the, with the superficial thing what he is doing or not doing so and, and especially millennials tell them what to do and not how to do they don't like to be micromanaged right we be seen our teenage children and all this new age child they, do, they don't like to micromanage just tell them what to do they don't want to be they don't want to know how to do they don't they don't like to be in your constant scrutiny we 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 try to be so much have scrutinize each and every uh, uh, each and every action that now they start repelling us they start resisting us so so we so we have to understand that they don't like to be in your constant scrutiny and so you so are so are we even we would not like to be in constant scrutiny of somebody that's why friends are the the best our actually our immediate family is is shows us how evolved we are in, in through the means of our relationship that's why ramdas there's a quote by ramdas if you think you're enlightenment if you think you're enlightened spend one week with your family <laughs> that, that, that then you really know whether you're enlightened or not right so so friends uh let me go share the next slide uh okay friends so so this is uh, another very important uh, slide which i want to share with you this is called transactional uh, analysis or it is also called the energy control dramas which we play within our family structure within our family what are the energy control dramas we play so you know here you can see there are four roles we play within the family drama so uh, one is of intimidator uh second is poor me third is inter interrogator and fourth is aloof so we all of us you know within this family structure we play one uh, we play one of the uh, one of the another role or two roles within this family family structure um, so all uh, if you be, as i will explain if you can reflect back within your own family what role you are playing or or can differentiate between your So if your two child both child could be very different so or, or your parents you can identify which roles are we playing right so this is this is uh, called also it is called energy theft because we are not drawing our energy from our own source from our own inner being we are trying to steal energy from others and because our family is the closest we live with it and they are the most uh, easiest guinea pig we try to steal energy within from our family member or from our closest friends right within the friends and family so and mostly within our family so 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 like uh, uh <clears throat> so you know as children as children our parents were our source of survival and whenever we needed energy to feel secure we needed one of these dramas to actually seem to work they were not the dramas that seem to work right so so i so these are energy control dramas so first drama is of intimidator or perpetrator this is first role so here we play a role here we steal energy by threat so uh, uh so so suppose i am playing i i i i i i in my family drama or my family role i i am a intimidator personality or a perpetrator personality so i i my my trait will be i am very egocentric i will be very sarcastic i always want to have a stage whenever there is a discussion within the family i want to be the center of attraction i always want to be i am always on the one who is commanding the whole discussion so uh, uh, and, and this kind of personality traits will will always threaten verbally or physically uh, by the force of loudness by the by even showing a physical strength uh, by showing uh, anger rage unexpected outbursts so that the so that the so that when you do all this the others the other persons around you uh, within your family feels afraid or they feel anxious or something bad may happen to them right they feel scared 
they feel uh, they feel uh, very low they feel pity they feel um, uh, so so you belittle them so when, when they feel like that what have you done you have actually drawn you have actually stolen energy from them and this happens very subtly you cannot see that oh this energy is being uh, oh they have stolen have stolen something from somebody no but it happens very subtly but in the very subtle energy dynamics we have stolen uh, uh, that that intimate or the personality has stolen energy from the other person because the moment the other person felt weak now this person felt more powerful more strengthful and now i feel good now i feel complete right so this is uh, this is the role of an intimidator now a perpetrator always needs a victim on the other side intimidator always needs a poor me or a perpetrator always needs a poor me or a victim you cannot you cannot steal energy if somebody is not feeling like that right so only 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 when the other person feels that then then my my role or my drama whatever i have enacted is successful because because only when he is able to release let go of his energy then only i can draw the energy from him then only i can steal the energy so so you need a you need the other person as a poor me or a victim to for a perpetrator to survive or for a perpetrator to be successful so what is the role of a poor me or a victim consciousness or a victim person here the victim person always steals energy by by making others feel guilty or he steals now 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 a perpetrator has stolen energy from from a victim personality right now the victim personality also is feeling very energyless now the victim personality also needs to steal energy from somebody now how does the victim personality or the poor me personality steals energy from somebody now what he will do is what he or she will do is he will seek sympathy or how do you seek sympathy oh my god i am going through so much pain in my life so much bad is happening to me he will make others feel guilty for their behaviors nobody cares for me nobody loves for me so this is a poor me or a victim personality they will very they will always carry that fragile ego you know they uh, a little bit small things will really hurt them and they will keep cribbing crying they will always have a very worried facial expression you know uh, um, they will be trembling or a uh, crying or repeatedly explaining some things repeatedly you know this happened this happened this person did this this uh, now they'll tell this same story to one person and another story same story to another person and the whole day will will uh, will you know uh, will go away and just telling other the same story over and over again and and, and but what, what happens is when when they do that this the other person all of a sudden feels sympathy towards this person feels guilty oh my god shit yaar nobody is taking care of that person i'm so sorry for you i'm so sorry i can understand i'm so sorry and and the moment the other person feel guilty or sorry or feel sympathy towards this person now this person has drawn energy and now he feel complete so all this is because why we are we are, we are not able to draw energy from our own source the truth is our own source is the ultimate resource our own source is an ever ready resource but because we are not able to draw energy from our own source we are seeking from something outside and that's why we steal energy from others right and this poor me victim personality uh, also sometimes demonstrate a very accommodating behavior very adjusting behavior and so that others so that they can be taken advantage of certainly they they want the others to take advantage of so that make it so that they can feel again poor me victim consciousness so that they can make others feel guilty and show to others that not enough be, is being done for, for for themselves so so this is friends a poor me or a victim personality so uh, so another personalities are interrogator personality so you know a intimidator and an interrogator is a very is the aggressive side of the personality trait and a poor me or the aloof is a uh, is a is a is a very passive kind of personality trait they are very uh, they, they are not aggressive but uh, they are passive personality poor me and aloof and the other two are intimidator and interrogator are very aggressive so what is the trait of an inter interrogator personality right so interrogator will always keep asking questions interrogator always interrogate interrogate um, uh, keep asking questions will keep probing uh, other person you know why did you do this can't you do this this way uh, is it is it this uh, uh, um, uh, you should ask me um, you know pro keep probing 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 the other person to find something wrong and he'll 
pick up one one wrong behavior and then we we will be criti- very critical of that person so that he breaks down the other spirit and other person spirit and will you know very it will be a, this person is a very hostile cricket critic they are very sharp they are very cynical they are hyper vigilant the one small wrong thing happened and they know exactly 10 good things happen they will overlook but one small wrong thing will you do they will catch you instantly they are hyper vigilant they are very skeptic skeptical they themselves are perfectionist because they they and that's why anything is wrong they will immediately catch you right so and they will use their uh, their uh, their logic their strong logic to to justify that they are right and the other person is wrong they they can use lot of data and the facts and intellects and justify strongly ki why you are wrong and they are right so friends so this is a integrator personality right so and now when the other person feels feels being vigilant or being proven wrong and when the other feel, person spirit is being broken down and and they they lost their and when they lose their uh, mojo in life or or there or any do or anything to do or to act anything and they feel guilty or shameful or what they went the, the integrator has stolen energy from that person and now the integrator feels powerful strong so this is how they have stole, stolen energy from that person now now at least now it, it develops because the integrator develops another kind of personality right when somebody is being, being a integrator or a, or a intimidator or a perpetrator on somebody now this person also there's another personality which also needs to uh, also develops another characteristic to 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 defend his energy so this is a personality which is called aloof personality so aloof personality becomes very aloof with everybody within the family they'll always act very withdrawn they'll always be very mysterious now their their energy is being drawn away they they their energy is being taken away now they also need energy from somebody Now how how will they steal energy from somebody? They will act very mysterious. They will keep. They will be very secretive in whatever they are doing. They will be very vague in what they are doing. Any question you ask, they will they will dodge you with some very vague answer, and you will feel very irritated. You will feel very. The other person will feel very frustrated, and the, when the other person feel very irritated or frustrated, that is where they draw the energy. that is how they draw the energy so these people will always need lot of space they will always be very non committal you know they, they will commit to something and all of a sudden and that they, then then they will all of a sudden they will not show up so that so that the other person feel very frustrated very angry very irritated but suddenly very subconsciously energetically they 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 when the other person is feeling irritated or frustrated they have drawn that energy they they, they have stolen that energy from that person and these persons will never ask for help they feel ki they don't need any help from anybody however they are always very confused very confused they have no clarity some day they will talk something other day they will talk something some day they want to do something when the time comes all of a sudden they change their mind now they say they don't want to do that very non committal committal so these are the personality traits of this aloof personality everybody is sitting in the family for dinner all of a sudden they say ki oh, i have a phone call to attend and they look and disappear for one hour oh, oh i i want to oh, i have got a loose motions and they are sitting in the bathroom for for one and a half hour so so they will have some reason to you know make other to 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 show the aloofness and make others other people feel uh, and you know angry or upset or depleted you know or or frustrated so this is this is how these are the kind of control dramas friends we play in our relationship and we need to understand the drama we need to understand to really live a more fulfilling relationship first we need to understand where are we in in, in terms of a relationship what are the energy control dramas are we playing are we are we also the part of this drama are we are a part of uh, stealing energy uh, or, or giving energy to somebody so so once we break this chain of pain once we break these patterns once we once we stop stealing energy from somebody or giving energy or being stolen energy from you once we break that pattern then we feel complete then 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 it is a it is a then we develop more authentic relationships so friends the more stay the more we we stay connected the more we are aware of the times uh that when that uh, that whenever we lose that connection just be aware be be the awareness is the key agent for change right so the moment you are aware 
you 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 will be able to you will be able to change you will be able to transform right so awareness is the key to understand are we playing any of these control dramas so uh, this is the next slide i'll quickly share this is the four uh, agreements by uh, by author don miguel it's a very popular book the four agreements i love this book very short book i recommend everyone to read he said be impeccable be be impeccable with your word in a relationship in a family always be impeccable with your word don't take anything personally most of the time first is be impeccable with your word don't say or do things which you do not mean or just don't say just which you do not mean so so be, be, be you speak your words with integrity i'm going to talk more about your power of speech um uh, speak your words with integrity and uh, say as request not as demand so so your tone of voice has to be good so be impeccable with your word second is don't take things personally most don't take anything personally most of the time uh, we 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 spoil a relationship because everything we take personally right it is not a lot of times they, the other person is going through the challenging moments the challenging times and what they are doing could be an expression of themselves so don't take it so personally and a lot of time we take it so personally to it to our heart and then we feel hurt we feel angry we feel sad we feel depressed so we have to understand that uh, because of our ego because of identity we take everything personally but the truth is we are we are we are spiritual beings out here to have a human experience so live with the santa claus energy know that everything is permanent even this role today is not permanent today you may be father tomorrow in next life time you may be a son of that person or you may not be anything of that person so don't take your anything in relationships or your roles so personally second is don't make assumptions in your relationship sometimes um, i remember one event when uh, a very close friend of mine i i called that person in last four days five times and that person did not call back and uh, uh when i called that person that person spoke to me the person uh, uh was very cold to me but uh, later on i realized that uh, she was going through uh, a a very difficult situation with her spouse and they were going through uh, uh, challenging times and eventually they it led to the divorce but uh, Uh, so you never know so and but 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 because that person behaved to me like that i also said okay if that person do not does not behaving funny then let me also not talk to that person and after 3 months i never called that person after 3 months i realized that this thing happened to them and when uh, and 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 when i met that person uh, i when i shared that person then she shared that this is the this is what she was going through so sometimes you know we make assumptions so please let's not make any assumptions we don't know what person is going through at that moment so don't make assumptions in relationships and always do your best fourth is fourth agreement is at any moment time it is it is it is in your choice to always give your best always do your best so so th that is that is your choice that is uh, that is that, that is the power you have in you how others do is is their choice but You, you do your best and forget the rest that is what uh, that, that 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 is what you are meant to do in a relationship right so that's all friends so now i'll just quickly share a slide on a power of speech how a speech is so important and then we'll go to transgenerational healing so friends um, in a relationship it is very important how we speak because even in terms of manifestation how you how what you speak you manifest right so poor mouth is equal to poor life um so uh, so uh, I, and and most of our relationship uh, reflects it uh, depends on how we actually speak so friends our words are like seeds when you speak something when you speak something out you actually give it life and whether you realize it or not you are actually prophesizing your future so by your very speech you are prophesizing your future and with repetitions it becomes a reality a lot of times we creep about negative emotions negative relationships we keep talking 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 and by doing that we are actually energizing that and that actually becomes a reality so our words words are the windows or they are walls 
they can sentence us or they can set us free so no matter how challenging the relationship the expression of words can actually can heal that relationship or or can actually uh, uh, make the relationship more challenging or, or it can deteriorate that relationship so so words are energy and they cast spells and that's why they are called spelling that's why spelling is cast casting spell so words are energy every word carries energy right change the way you speak about you and your your yourself and others you will change your life it is very important how you change how you talk about you yourself and how you talk about others once you change the way you communicate the one you express in form of words you will change your life and the fact is what you are not changing you are choosing if you are not changing you are choosing so 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 be aware of your words don't talk about the problems talk about the promise most of the time in a relationship we keep focusing on the problem problem in a relationship we uh, our our most troubled relationship or most trouble situation in a relationship will occupy most of the time most uh, our, our most conscious uh, time you know in our mind that that, that will will occupy the space in my mind because because that is troubling me most and we keep thinking keep thinking keep thinking about the problem keep how can she do this to me how can he did this to me uh, this is not right this is i i am being treated so unfair it is is unjust and we keep thinking and thinking and thinking by doing that we are feeding more energy to that and when we do that we are actually drawing more of that situation to our life we are doing more of that uh, we are evoking more of that response from the other person in relationship to you uh, and that is how the pers other person will relate more to you because that is your vibrational output so don't talk about the problem talk about the promise focus on the solution and then on the problem so when you verbalize a thought you give it a right to come to pass pass right every sentence actually every sentence in an affirmation to yourself right so 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 use that's why we use so many affirmations in medit meditations and use why that's why positive affirmations are so powerful so friends be as i told you before be impeccable with your words your physical health depends on what goes into your mouth and mental and emotional health is reflected by what comes out of your mouth so your words your words your words speak of you so all these labels and vows are actually self fulfilling prophecies you know a lot of times in the in the moment of intense emotion we do we take some decision or we take a vow i will never forgive you ever in my life i will so see to that that you are ruined or something very negative will stay with such strong emotion that actually it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy and and it is and and whether it does, whether it becomes for the person or not but it will become for you because that is your vibrational output to the universe universe only understand the sign of energy and if it, if that is your vibrational output the universe will just match it which match that output in form and give and give expression and life to your vibrational output so so uh, uh, so uh, and and it will face you will face the similar situations into your life and 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 that is how actually you are prophesizing your life you are shaping your life right so so friends take to, uh, next topic i want uh, uh, in in terms of uh, words power of speech i also want to talk about inner talk talk time it is not just about what you are speaking outside it is also about what is what is your inner speech going on what is your inner talk going on most of the time because of the social status or the social conditioning or to maintain that facade you always talk good right you meet a some you meet somebody in a party you say nice to meet you and the moment that person and after spending some time the moment that person leaves you say oh she's a she's stupid she's a bitch or oh, how funny is that person or whatever something you'll creep about that person right so so you may be or, or you may be not talking you may be in my in your mind you are thinking you know how boring is this person and here you are saying so nice to meet you oh, I, oh you are so good oh i love this about yourself and inside you hate about that person so so your inner talk actually matters a lot because you because whatever you are in, in your inner talking is what what that is the feeling you are associating with uh, is, is 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 the feeling you are your is, is the feeling you are uh, evoking within yourself with that inner talk 
is 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 actually uh, corresponding to that feeling to the feeling which which you are vibrating at now so is, is so your thoughts and your emotions are are, are congruent to your inner talk because because when you are not talking to others you are very genuine to yourself right so talking to oneself is a habit we all often indulge in and we cannot stop talking but we can but we can uh, uh, we cannot stop inner talking but we can control the nature and direction of inner conversations so be aware of your inner talk because most of the time in a relationship when we face with challenging relationship or any contrasting relationship it could be with your very close relationship maybe with your wife or with your children or with your parents your in laws you know we keep in our inner talk is you know outwardly we may be very peaceful silent but by the inner talk there is so much of frustration so much of anger so much of resistance going on and 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 all because of that emotion all our inner dialogue is in that direction and we give more then then we give more life we give more life to that expression because whatever is inner talk your subconscious that is what you are feeding to your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind will accept that as true and whatever you impress on your subconscious mind through the means of your feeling shall be expressed in your life right so this is how we live a life so most of us are totally unaware of the fact of our inner conversations but the inner conversations are actually the cause of the circumstances of our life and that becomes and that is the kind of relationship we encounter in our life so we become what we think about whole day long and every inner thought or every conversation shifts our vibration energy so friends be selective of our inner talk wherever your thoughts goes your energy flows right so even though it is a inner talk your energy is flowing in your direction right so friends that's why in a relationship actually energy management is more important and not just in relationship it could be anything it could be a financial relationship it could be time relationship relationship with time it could be a relationship with money energy management is more important than time management how you managing your energy with money how you energizing your money with managing your energy relation energy with time how are you managing your energy with that with with your relationship with your loved ones or your people around you it is all about energy management so be focus right so be focus on how your energy is flowing what is the energy what is your feeling what are your emotions because our emotions our energy is nothing but uh freak uh, your energy and frequency it has every emotion has its own energy and frequency and vibration and and that is what that is what uh what that is what you are broadcasting to the world and that is how you will draw the situation into your life right so like um uh, and 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 like energy and consciousness our thoughts our inner conversations our imagination our feelings they are all intertwined they are all interconnected with each other right so um, <clears throat> every in a conversation carries an emotional charge and it converts it, it and we convert that in, so that it, and with, because of that emotional charge we convert it into feelings right and everything is a manifestation of that mental conversation which goes on in us without even without our awareness sometimes even even unconsciously we, we keep on it is an unconscious act uh on the basis of just this inner talking right so and 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 then and because of that unconscious act and because of this repeated inner talking it becomes a belief system now we are seeing everything we are seeing that relationship from the lens of that past from the lens of that belief because our beliefs are nothing our beliefs are nothing but our most practiced inner conversation our most practiced thoughts become the beliefs and then our beliefs drive our behaviors right our thinking follows the tracks laid down in a in a conversation so they they the in a conversation lays down the track and then our thinking our words our actions will just follow that track so friends it is very important um you not just the speech outside but your inner speech Music